What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the top 10 stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade for the first week of February in 2019. So for all you guys out there that are new to my channel, my name is Estas and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for all you out there that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter, and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And I challenge you, let's see if we can get this video to 60 likes. So smash that like button if you guys enjoy the content, find value in the content. I really appreciate it, and it does help the channel grow. So without further ado, let's talk about very quickly the SPX, the S&P 500, so we can get an understanding of how the market, the 500 largest U.S. companies have been moving over the past couple of weeks, guys. So we know, you know, we sold off very heavily from October all the way down to around the end of December. We all know that by now. And from December, guys, the end of December, fun fact, We've actually had the best January in the stock market since 1987. The S&P 500 is up nearly 14%, which is the best January since in about 32 years, guys, which is absolutely insane, right? And the fact that, you know, we're up around 4% this past week by itself, 14%, you know, this whole month or this past month in January, it brings up some questions like, are we going to start to see some short-term money funnel out of the market? Is this, Are the stocks going to start to fall down in price? We saw Facebook, Apple last week, their reported earnings along with Amazon, Microsoft, Tesla, just to name a few. You know, some of these earnings were bad, some, you know, pretty solid. And the market's really reacted well to a lot of these earnings, guys. So the fact that we're a bit overextended, you know, we've been having a month and, a, and some change now, about a month and a couple of days of straight push-up, you know, there is a question of whether or not we're going to start selling off now. And that's what I'm honestly waiting for. I do see potential in us selling off now, especially since all the big names, except for Google, have reported their earnings. And I am excited for Google's earnings. I think there this week if I'm not mistaken that's going to be another huge earnings report but let me know down below what you guys think are we going to start to sell off right now you know I think there's a pretty solid possibility that we slowly do start to sell off potentially some short-term money coming out of these stocks that have really just been up a lot over the past couple of weeks guys literally Facebook for example you know just to get a little sidetracked very quickly, you know, Facebook literally in the past couple of weeks is up like a ridiculous amount, 30% in terms of the low from 122. You know, we saw Apple, another one that's up a ton, right, from 142 up to around 168. That's about a 15% move. So there are questions, you know, are these stocks going to start selling off? You know, I personally think there is a possibility and, uh, you, know, you know, only time is going to tell, right? So again, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. I would love to know. So let's talk about some stocks now. Some of these I did talk about in my previous video and in a couple of other videos in the past, but I figured I'd still talk about them because they are still relevant to this upcoming week. So let's start this up, guys. First stock I'm watching is Sony, ticker symbol SNE. And this is one that reported earnings this past Friday. Obviously, the market did not react too well to their earnings report. They are down about 8%, you know, at the close of uh, Friday, down around $4 per share. And if we take a look a little bit closer on this chart, guys, we can see strong consolidation and even a break above the 50 SMA here on this five-day, five-minute chart. And if we're looking a little bit further here, guys, on the 20-day, actually, let's take a look at the 90-day, uh, we can see that Sony's actually holding a support at around $46 from a couple of weeks back, right? This was actually when we saw that huge sell-off in December. It bottomed out on the 24th, 26th of December here, and we ended up shooting back up all the way to 51. Now we sold off, obviously, from 51 all the way down to 46. And now the question is, guys, you know, are we going to slowly start to fill this gap 
from 46 back up to the previous resistance, which at this point we can all agree is at around, let's say, this is the first one that I can spot, 48.20. And of course, the next one under that is going to be around $47. Are we going to start to fill this gap, guys? That is something that I'm going to be waiting for. And of course, I set an alert at $47. And, you know, my reasoning behind this, guys, is that whenever you see a stock sell off very heavily after earnings like 8%, 10%, 15%. I always think it's a good idea to watch those stocks to see if they can start to fill the gap back up, right? That's a very good opportunity in Sony and in a bunch of other stocks that do report earnings and that go down. You know, it's a good opportunity in my eyes to see if they do close that gap to potentially profit on that, right? Am I saying that, you know, Sony's going to push up or any other stocks that gap down always push back up? Of course not, right? For all we know, Sony can continue to sell off and all these other stocks that gap down could continue to sell off, right? But the fact is that, you know, through my experience in the stock market, I have seen stocks sell off and then slowly start to fill the gap back up like three, four, five percent which opens up a nice room for the day trader, for the short-term swing trader to hop in and make some money, right? So that's the first one I'm watching, guys. Ticker symbol SNE. Pretty solid opportunity, in my opinion, especially if we hold this support. If we break up above 46 dollars dollars ish $47, we could continue to fill the gap back up to $48, offering it about a nice 5% profit, 4 or 5% profit up to there. So the second stock I'm watching, guys, again, I talked about this one in the previous video, is Tesla, guys. So Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. This is a stock that I'm sure all you guys out there know. It's been in the news over the past couple of weeks. They just reported earnings. The stock actually tanked not really tanked but it went down the day it reported earnings it went down to 294 but from then guys take a look at this we see that it held that higher low it held that 50 SMA support here on the on the 90 day 2 hour chart and it's been uptrending ever since then guys we can see the higher low here from the previous we made another higher low at about 303 and now we're trending at around the 310, 315 level, guys. So take a look at this resistance on the 90-day, 2-hour chart. We can see the 180 SMA is acting as a resistance right here. And this is what I want to see before entering a position. I want to see a break out of this 180 SMA, possibly in the 315, 316 price point, and then a consolidation support on top of this 180 SMA. And then from there, guys, if that does end up happening, we can slowly potentially fill that gap back up to around $340 offering us a nice around, let's say, 5, 6, 7% profit in terms of Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. So guys, you know, a little pullback is, is seeming like it could happen since we are a bit overbought. But if we do pull back to around 310 and then slowly start to push back up, and then we see the break on the 90-day, 2-hour chart... Of this 180 SMA, I think that's going to be a solid entry in terms of Tesla. And remember, guys, whenever you're doing your analysis, super important to check out a bunch of different time frames. Don't just take a look at one time frame. Let's say the 180, for example, here. Take a look at the 90. This is one that I actually added myself. You can customly add, you know, your uh, time frames here. Just go down here, and then you can do that. Um, you know, check out the 20-day chart. Check out all of these different charts. And if you're taking a look at the 20-day chart, now that I just saw that, we're seeing a bullish cross slowly starting to form here. And by that, I mean whenever the 50 SMA crosses above the 180 SMA, that's a very bullish move, meaning that we could expect more upside in the future, right? This is what I call a bullish cross. And we can see the exact opposite is for a downtrend, meaning that let's say the 50 crosses below the 180, we can expect, expect more downside to come, which is exactly what ended up happening here from the sell off 350 all the way to 280 and again guys when the 50 crosses above that means more upside bullish potential in the stock so tesla 
Number two stock I'm watching. The third duo I'm watching here, more of a duo, is JDST and JNUG. And they, those two trade based upon gold futures slash GC. And whenever slash GC is going down in price, that's when JDST, the bear ETF, is going up. But whenever, obviously, GC is going up, JNUG, which is the bull ETF, is going up in price as well. So what I'm seeing here, guys, on this chart for the gold futures is a potential setup that's looking like it's going to sell off, right? We see it found its top at 1330, right? We can see it's slowly starting to push down. We're at 1322 right now. And if this sell-off continues down past, let's say, I would say about 1320, which is the previous um uh, resistance, which is now a new support. Let's say if we break that level, I do see the gold futures potentially selling off to around 1315. Then, of course, if we break that level as well, the next resistance or support, rather, is going to be on the 50 SMA, guys. So if we do end up selling down here, what is that going to do? Well, that's going to open up some profit margin on JDST, guys, right? That's going to shoot JDST up, let's say, from around $37, possibly back into the $40 level, right? And the whole idea here and the beauty of ETFs, inverse ETFs, is you can play JDST on the potential pullback in gold, right? And let's say gold wants to continue that uptrend pattern once it does find support on, let's say, the 1313, 15 level. Let's say it finds support here and slowly starts to curl back up. Or on the 50 SMA, you know, you could end up playing JNUG, which is the bull ETF right here, and then start to profit on the upside on gold once it did start to sell off. You guys understand what I'm saying? That's kind of the whole idea of you know, here behind these ETFs. And quite frankly, guys, you know, gold futures do seem extremely overbought and JNUG seems extremely overbought as well. They're screaming pullback in my personal opinion, guys. Take a look. You know, JNUG's on a run from about $840 all the way up to $11. Literally, that's like a 40% run in the matter of a couple of days. So this is honestly screaming pullback in my personal opinion. But let's say, you know, the gold futures end up shooting back up from 1320. Let's say they start to push back up into the 1330s. You know, this just could be another opportunity to get into JNUG on this consolidation. Only time will tell, guys. The whole idea is to take a look at the futures, right? They open up 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sundays, and you can plan out your trades into Monday basically by just looking at the futures and seeing are they pulling back? Are they continuing the uptrend? You know, it's all just depending on what those futures are going to do. So the next one I want to talk about is a potential put option on Facebook and AT&T, guys. So like I said earlier on in this video, Facebook reported their earnings this past week and I was quite impressed with their earnings, guys. Their earnings, honestly, out of the uh, the big four companies, I would say Microsoft, uh, you know, what's the other one? Facebook, Apple, and Amazon. I would say Facebook's earnings were the best out of those four. And, of course, we have Google coming up very soon here. That's the, that's the fifth one that I want to see. But out of the four that we've already seen, Facebook did the best, in my opinion, right? And we can see that stock went up from 146 to 171 in one day, guys. One day. The stock share went up $25 in the matter of a day. We're seeing some consolidation, some slow push down here. We're at around 165 right now. And the question is, you know, are we overbought and are we at a point in time where some short-term money is going to start to flood out, profit-taking is going to start to happen, which will send the stock down a bit, right? We can see... You know, the R size very overbought. We're consolidating strongly here, like I said. And a dump here, maybe back to the 150s, maybe 160, mid 155, doesn't seem too out of uh, you know, too out of question right now. So a short-term put option, maybe about a week or two weeks out, could be a potential play right here on Facebook. And again, for all you guys that don't know, let me quickly grab my uh, charger so this uh, computer doesn't die on me. But for those of you guys that don't know, Facebook is one of my long-term positions. And I've actually been adding Facebook shares 
This whole entire downtrend, honestly, from 170, I was buying Facebook all the way back here in August. So it's been about six months since I've been buying Facebook. I've been buying it all the way down here. The most recent time I bought was in the 130s, I believe. I did not buy here, which I do regret now looking at the chart. But, you know, hedging, hedging against my position on a potential downside right here will give me money on the put options if that does end up selling off, which then I can add more shares shares if we do get back here you know with the profits that I get from the put option so let me know down there in the comments what do you think about Facebook and AT&T as potential put options so AT&T guys this one's just overall on a downtrend right now. We can see, you know, lower highs are being made. We can see 35 here is the high, 33 is the next high, 34 is the high here. Then we can see a constant deceleration in the price uh, you know, of AT&T, and it's honestly tuning up right now for a sell-off, in my personal opinion, right? We can see the slow top-off at $31 and at about $30.90, and now we're trading below the, um, you know, the 50 SMA. We took a dump after earnings all the way down to $29, so if we do get rejected by the 50 SMA here, guys, this green line that you see, you know, this could be a potential play on a put option for the next couple of weeks, maybe back down to, let's say, $28, $27, maybe $26.50. You know, that's not too out of, you know, out of line in my personal opinion, right, in terms of AT&T and Facebook. And these are stocks that if you do successfully play put options on, you make some profits, right? You can add shares into your long-term portfolio at a lower price. And of course, AT&T is a very big dividend paying company. I also own this one in my long-term portfolio. So, you know, buying more shares when the dividend is going to be higher at this point, because as the price lowers, the dividend yield goes up, right? You know, that might not be too bad of an opportunity in terms of AT&T, guys. So another one I want to talk about very quickly is J&J. &J. Not too much to say about this one. Honestly, I'm just waiting for a pullback on J&J. &J. We do see it's a little bit overbought here on the 180-day 4-hour chart. Extremely overbought. Honestly, it's at the 70 on the uh, RSI level here. And for those of you guys that don't know about RSI, it's the Relative Strength Index. And pretty much whenever a stock's price is, um, you know, very bullish, Bullish. It's pushing up in price. It's going to be pushing up more to the overbought side, right? Which might mean, you know, it might not be the best opportunity to get into that stock, quite frankly, right? But whenever we see the RSI at the 30 level, meaning it's more oversold, people are selling, right? The stock price is lower, right? That could be a better opportunity to hop in potentially, right? Not always, right? You don't always base your decisions off of one indicator, but, you know, it's always good to keep a look at, uh, just keep an eye on these different indicators. It really does help when trading. So overall, guys, you know, I do understand j and is overextended. So a pullback, possibly back to 130, maybe 131 to this previous support here. You know, that could be a good opportunity for a potential position as a swing trade in J&J. &J. And of course, you know, I think J&J, &J, since it is a value stock, you know, a blue chip company, all that jazz, you know, this could be a safer uh, trade, safer swing trade, um, you know, just because of that, guys. We don't really see much volatility except for uh, this time right here where we got news about the uh, asbestos in some of their products, which, you know, a lot of the investors did not like that. The stock went from 147 down to about 122, opening up a pretty big buying opportunity, in my personal opinion. But we'll talk about that in another video. Um, you know, ever since then, hasn't been too volatile. So this one's more safe. In my opinion, let me know what you guys think about J&J. &J. So another one I want to watch and trade this week potentially is UWT. And this is a crude oil ETF. It trades based upon slash CL. And whenever slash CL is going up in price, UWT is going up in price. So it's safe to say right now, guys, that crude oil is officially out of its downtrending pattern that it was on for a couple of months. We broke the 180 SMA. We broke the 50 SMA. We see the cross of the 50 above the 180, meaning bullish, 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 more green to come, right? That's a very good sign. And the fact that we've been making higher highs here on the on the uh, shorter term basis here, right? We've been making higher highs, higher lows. We just pushed up to another higher high. You know, 
a pullback here, in my opinion, is going to offer a very solid entry point, you know, in UWT. And we can see UWT, guys, was once an ETF that was $50 in price. And I don't advise swing trading these ETFs because when you read on the website that these ETFs come from, you know, you're not really supposed to swing trade these. These are more meant for day trading because they're very volatile, right? But people do swing trade them. And if you do believe in swing trading these ETFs, you know, you could potentially double, triple your money if gold, or not gold, if crude oil does get back to around $60 a barrel, $65. You know, you could end up doubling your money, $65, $70 a barrel. At that point, you know, UWT is going to be up huge, right? It's going to be up very big. So if you do believe in that, if you're bullish on crude oil, you know, UWT is going to be very, very good play for you over the pat over the next couple of weeks, months. That is what I'm looking at, guys. So crude oil, UWT, those are one of the top on my list for this upcoming week. So, of course, TVIX is another one that I'm watching. For those of you guys, oh, that is not 10-year U.S. Treasury Index. Nope, that is not TVIX. This is TVIX, guys. And you might be asking me, Stas, you know, this pattern looks like absolute crap on TVIX. And I would agree with you there. The pattern does look like absolute crap. But the fact that... I personally think that we could potentially see some sell-off this upcoming week in the markets. You know, TVIX could end up being a solid play. And for those of you guys that don't know, TVIX trades based upon the SPX, S&P 500. And whenever the S&P 500 is selling off, that's when TVIX is going up. Hence why we see it went from $24 to $86 in a matter of three months from October to the end of December, right? And now, since the markets have been doing well... It's lost over 50% of its value since the top of uh, the end of December, right? So, you know, like I said, guys, you know, potential sell-off this upcoming week is not looking too out of hand here. And the fact that we're seeing some consolidation in the SPX over the past two trading days could, hence, uh, could hint to a potential pullback to the downside, you know, to the SPX, right? And the question here is, are we going to pull back and continue the uptrend, right? Are we going to pull back and bounce on this trend line to the upside? Or are we going to pull back, break this, and end up breaking the 180 SMA, right? And that is the question. And of course, guys, if we see the cross of the 180 below the 50, that also indicates bearish, 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 right? So if that ends up happening, guys, you know, TVIX is going to end up being a very solid play for this upcoming week. And now to end off this video, guys, let's quickly talk about DGAS and UGAS and natural gas. And for those of you guys that don't know, I'm sure all you guys out there know because literally a lot of YouTube stock people talk about UGAS, DGAS, all these uh, you know, natural gas ETFs. Um, you know, this this future guys, natural gas, has been selling off like crazy over the past couple of weeks. So right now, you know, DGAS has been doing absolutely phenomenal over these past couple of weeks as, you know, natural gas has been selling off. So the question here is, guys, you know, is natural gas going to continue this downtrend or are we slowly going to start to push back up and start to see some buying power and some RSI movement to the upside for natural gas and you gas in general, right? So the fact that we are a bit oversold here, you know, we could end up seeing a pump back up to around 280, maybe even 285, 290 in terms of natural gas. And that's going to open up a very solid margin on you gas, guys, right? You gas. So, you know, I'm kind of iffy on trading these. I've honestly haven't been trading them too often because natural gas is very hard to uh, not really predict. I mean, yeah, I mean, to predict, it's very, very hard compared to some other, you know, stocks like J&J, &J, for example. Some of the ones we talked about earlier, those are more uh, predictable, safer, in my opinion, as opposed to these ones here. But, you know, I see a potential if natural gas does push back up to 280, 285, 290, we could end up seeing you guys pop back up. But overall, guys, you know, you can't deny the fact that we are in a downtrend in natural gas. And, uh, you know, if we do end up pushing back up, just keep an eye on that 50 SMA for rejection back down to the downside, and that'll open up more opportunity for D gas, right? So keep an eye on 
on the futures, guys, remember, they open up at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You'll be able to see the crude oil futures, natural gas, you know, uh, gold futures, whatever you guys, uh, you know, whatever futures you guys trade ETFs based upon. You'll be able to see those, you know, the NASDAQ um futures as well all that kind of stuff you'll be able to see so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and drop a comment down below let me know who do you guys have winning the super bowl right i know we talked about this in the chat uh just a little bit off topic here but i think the Patriots are going to win. I'm a diehard Eagles fan. I'm so excited we beat them last year. But seeing Tom Brady lose two Super Bowls in a row, I just don't see it happening, to be completely honest with you guys, especially against Jared Goff, who is a very good quarterback, but he is a young guy, you know, Let's, I don't know, guys. I don't know. He's young. You know, Gurley's young. I would love to see them win, but I kind of just have to be more realistic in my pick, and I'm taking the Patriots, guys, this year. So drop a comment down below. Let me know who do you guys think is going to win the Super Bowl. So let me know. I'm excited. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you're new. Peace out.